The Apostolic Fathers were Christian theologians who lived in the 1st and 2nd centuries AD, who are believed to have personally known some of the Twelve Apostles, or to have been significantly influenced by them. Their writings, though popular in early Christianity, were ultimately not included in the canon of the New Testament once it reached its final form. Many of the writings derive from the same time period and geographical location as other works of early Christian literature that did come to be part of the New Testament, and some of the writings found among the Apostolic Fathers seem to have been just as highly regarded as some of the writings that became the New Testament. <laughs> Background the label Apostolic Fathers has been applied to these writers only since the 17th century, to indicate that they were thought of as representing the generation that had personal contact with the Twelve Apostles. The earliest known use of the term, Apostolic Al Fathers, was by William Wake in 1693, when he was chaplain in ordinary to King William and Queen Mary of England. According to the Catholic Encyclopedia, the use of the term Apostolic Fathers can be traced to the title of a 1672 work by Jean-Baptiste Cotelier, S.S. Patrum qui temporibus apostolicus floruerin opera, Works of the Holy Fathers who flourished in the Apostolic Times, which was abbreviated to Bibliotheca Patrum Apostolicorum Library of the Apostolic Fathers by L. J. Ittig in his 1699 edition of the same. The history of the title for these writers was explained by Joseph Lightfoot, in his 1890 translation of the Apostolic Fathers' works. T. He expression, Apostolic Fathers, itself does not occur, so far as I have observed, until comparatively recent times. Its origin, or at least its general currency, should probably be traced to the idea of gathering together the literary remains of those who flourished in the age immediately succeeding the Apostles, and who presumably therefore were their direct personal disciples. This idea first took shape in the edition of Cotelier during the last half of the 17th century AD 1672. Indeed such a collection would have been an impossibility a few years earlier. The first half of that century saw in print for the first time the Epistles of Clement AD 1633, and of Barnabas AD 1645, to say nothing of the original Greek of Polycarp's Epistle AD 1633 and the Ignatian letters in their genuine form AD 1644, 1646. The materials therefore would have been too scanty for such a project at any previous epoch. In his title page however Cotelier does not use the actual expression, though he approximates to it, s.s. Patrum qui temporibus apostolicus floruerin opera, but the next editor, Thomas Ittig, 1699, adopts as his title Patras Apostolici, and thenceforward it becomes common. <laughs> List of works the following writings are generally grouped together as having been written by the Apostolic Fathers. All or most of these works were originally written in Greek. Older English translations of these works can be found online in the Anti-Nicene Fathers series on the Christian Classics Ethereal Library website. Published English translations have also been made by various scholars of early Christianity, such as Joseph Lightfoot, Cursip Lake, Bart D. Ehrman and Michael W. Holmes. The first English translation of the Apostolic Fathers' works was published in 1693, by William Wake 1657 then rector of Westminster St. James, later 1716 Archbishop of Canterbury. It was virtually the only English translation available until the mid-19th century. Since its publication many better manuscripts of the Apostolic Fathers' works have been discovered. There are several Greek text editions The Apostolic Fathers. Volume 1. I Clement. 2 Clement. Ignatius. Polycarp. Didache. Barnabas. Loeb Classical Library. Cambridge, Harvard University Press, 1912 Cursip Lake. The Apostolic Fathers. Volume 2. Shepherd of Hermas. Martyrdom of Polycarp. Epistle to Diognetus. Loeb Classical Library. Cambridge, Harvard University Press, 1913 Cursip Lake The Apostolic Fathers. Volume 1. I Clement. 2 Clement. Ignatius. Polycarp. Didache. Loeb Classical Library. Cambridge, Harvard University Press, 2003 Bart Ehrman replaced Lake. The Apostolic Fathers. Volume 2. Epistle of Barnabas. 
Papias and Quadratus. Epistle to Diognetus. The Shepherd of Hermas. Loeb Classical Library. Cambridge, Harvard University Press, 2005 Bart Ehrman replaced Lake. The Apostolic Fathers, Greek Texts and English Translations, 3rd edition. Grand Rapids, Baker, 2007 Michael Holmes Die Apostolischen Vader. Tübingen, Moore Siebeck, 1992 Andreas Lindemann and Henning Paulsen German. Topic. Fathers. Topic. Topic. Clement of Rome. Topic. The first epistle of Clement, c. AD 96, was copied and widely read, and is generally considered to be the oldest Christian epistle in existence outside of the New Testament. The letter is extremely lengthy, twice as long as the Epistle to the Hebrews, and it demonstrates the author's familiarity with many books of both the Old Testament and New Testament. The Epistle repeatedly refers to the Old Testament as Scripture and includes numerous references to the Book of Judith, thereby establishing usage or at least familiarity with Judith in his time. Within the letter, Clement calls on the Christians of Corinth to maintain harmony and order. Tradition identifies the author as Clement, Bishop of Rome, and scholarly consensus is overwhelmingly in favor of the letter's authenticity. Early church lists place him as the second or third Bishop of Rome, although, "...there is no evidence for monarchical episcopacy in Rome at so early a date." The second epistle of Clement was traditionally ascribed to Clement, but it is now generally considered to have been written later, c. AD 140–160, and therefore could not be the work of Clement, who died in AD 99. Whereas 1 Clement was an epistle, 2 Clement appears to be a transcript of an oral homily or sermon, making it the oldest surviving Christian sermon outside of the New Testament. Topic. Ignatius of Antioch. Topic. Ignatius of Antioch also known as Theophorus, from the Greek for God-bearer was Bishop of Antioch. He may have known the Apostle John directly, and his thought is certainly influenced by the tradition associated with this Apostle. En route to his martyrdom in Rome, Ignatius wrote a series of letters which have been preserved as an example of the theology of the earliest Christians. Important topics addressed in these letters include ecclesiology, the sacraments, the role of bishops, and the nature of biblical Sabbath. He clearly identifies the local church hierarchy composed of bishop, presbyters, and deacons and claims to have spoken in some of the churches through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He is the second after Clement to mention the Pauline epistles. Topic. Polycarp of Smyrna Topic. Polycarp of Smyrna c. AD 69 c. 155 was Bishop of Smyrna now Izmir in Turkey. His student Irenaeus wrote that he "...was not only instructed by the Apostles, and conversed with many who had seen the Lord, but was also appointed Bishop by Apostles in Asia and in the Church in Smyrna," and that he himself had, as a boy, listened to "...the accounts which Polycarp gave of his intercourse with John and with the others who had seen the Lord." The options for this John are John the son of Zebedee, traditionally viewed as the author of the Fourth Gospel, or John the Presbyter. Traditional advocates follow Eusebius in insisting that the apostolic connection of Papias was with John the Evangelist, and that this John, the author of the Gospel of John, was the same as the Apostle John. Polycarp tried and failed to persuade Anicetus, Bishop of Rome, to have the West celebrate Easter on 14 Nisan, as in the East. He rejected the bishop suggestion that the East use the Western date. In 155, the Smyrnans demanded Polycarp's execution as a Christian, and he died a martyr. His story has it that the flames built to kill him refused to burn him, and that when he was stabbed to death, so much blood issued from his body that it quenched the flames around him. Polycarp is recognized as a saint in both the Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox churches. Topic. The Didache Greek, Didache translate. Didache, lit. Teaching, is a brief early Christian treatise, dated anywhere from as early as AD 50 to the end of the 1st century. 
it contains instructions for Christian communities. The text, parts of which may have constituted the first written catechism, has three main sections dealing with Christian lessons, rituals such as baptism and the Eucharist, and church organization. It was considered by some of the church fathers as part of the New Testament, but rejected as spurious by others. Scholars knew of the Didache through references in other texts, but the text itself had been lost. It was rediscovered in 1873. Topic: <laughs> Shepherd of Hermas. Topic: The second-century Shepherd of Hermas was popular in the early church and was even considered scriptural by some of the church fathers, such as Irenaeus and Tertullian. It was written in Rome in Koine Greek. The shepherd had great authority in the 2nd and 3rd centuries. The work comprises five visions, twelve mandates, and ten parables. It relies on allegory and pays special attention to the church, calling the faithful to repent of the sins that have harmed it. See also Church Fathers Doctor of the Church Anti-Nicene Fathers Ecumenical Councils Nicene and Post-Nicene Fathers Twelve Apostles Seventy Apostles Saints References Notes Topic Citations Topic Topic External Links Topic Catholic Encyclopedia Apostolic Fathers Bartlett, James Vernon, nineteen eleven Apostolic Fathers In Chisholm, Hugh Encyclopedia Britannica, two eleventh ed. Cambridge University Press. pp. 201-204. This contains a more detailed exegesis of the writings. Apostolic Fathers in the Christian Cyclopedia SBL Apostolic Fathers section